Jessie here. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. For today's video, I am going to be checking in with my April budget for week one. I have already gone in and written out all of my expenses for the week, categorized them, color coded them, gotten everything all ready. I did this in a separate video, so if you missed it, make sure you check out my expense tracking from week one. I went into detail about all of the money we spent and where it went, so definitely check out that video if you're nosy like me and you like to see where people spend their money. I'm gonna use all of this information to check in with my budget now and see how we're doing. The first week was rough. There was some overspending for sure, um, but as always, the first week of the month is always my highest spending week. Um, we have a lot of bills that come out in the first week of the month. I tend to spend more in my variable categories, I guess just because mentally I think that I have more to work with since it's just starting over fresh. Um, but let's see how we truly did. I'm gonna go in and fill in the categories for this monthly section first. If you're not familiar with my hybrid budget system, it is a two page budget spread and I print mine this way and punch it so that I can open it up and look at the whole month at a glance. Everything that I need can be found right here. If I were a bu budget minimalist, this would be the only two pages that I would need for absolutely everything for my monthly budget. There is a section here to track things that come out of my account monthly, just like one-time bills, that sort of thing. And also I use the section to write out my monthly budget for our variable expenses, things like groceries and eating out. And then I check in with those variable expenses each week using the, these weekly sections. There are five weekly sections, so if you have a five, pay period month or there's five weeks in the month, you have room for all of those things. There's a section here for savings so you can break down what amount you want to save for your savings goals. There's also a section here for sinking funds if you're the type of person to use sinking funds. And there's a place for debt payments if you are working on paying off your debt. So really this is all you need. Now I have lots of other budget worksheets as well because I'm not a budget minimalist. I like to break things down. I like, I have expense trackers, I have a debt tracker, I have lots of other things. You can get access to my budget worksheets in a couple of different ways. If you would like your April budget to be as pretty as mine, you can click down below in the description box my Etsy shop and you can go and buy a bundle of these worksheets at a set price or you can click down below the join button and join my channel membership to get access to these budget worksheets as well as lots of fun perks here on my channel including uh, members only videos and exclusive live streams um, and it's more affordable to join my membership to get the worksheets than it is to buy them on Etsy because I don't have to contend with like Etsy fees and things. So a couple of different ways you can get your hands on my budget worksheets. They are all printables. They print out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So just a standard page. I myself like to take mine and punch them and put them on this disc bound system, which is a big size happy planner. And that's how I like to bind mine, keep them all together so that I can easily um, move them around, um, pull them out, write on them, stick them back in. Um, I love my budget worksheets. Having a pretty budget just makes me more excited to sit down and budget every week. So yeah, if you want to get your hands on these, I highly recommend them. They're so pretty and my hybrid budget is pretty unique. I haven't seen a similar setup like this anywhere else. So there you go, that's my little spiel. Now let's get into the video. So I have my expenses tracked for the week. I'm gonna use all this information to fill this in, starting with the bills that have come out so far this month. My lot rent, for example, has already been paid. You can see it right here. The amount that came out of my account was $712.57. So I'm gonna write that here in this actual column. 
And that is, as you can see, under budget, which is great. Whenever I write my budget, I always try to um, estimate high for my amounts. That way it allows me to have a little bit of a buffer in my account. I always estimate my income low, which I don't share my income here on my channel just for privacy reasons. But when I'm budgeting in the, the privacy of, um, you know, my own home here without the camera rolling, I estimate my income low and my expenses high. And that's a built-in buffer. Works out great. All right. What else did I have come out this week in terms of bills? You can see I highlighted all of my bills in blue to make it really easy. Um, so I had DTE come out at $212.11. So that was right here. And you can see that was under budget as well. My camper payment came out, as you can see here. I've zoomed you in so that you can see what I'm writing, but maybe I zoomed in a little bit too far. Um, I can never really figure out a happy medium between zooming in too far and not far enough. So you guys will have to let me know if this is good. Um, DTE we did. Camper right here, $200, just as anticipated. Also had car insurance come out this week at $504.81. And we had my golf cart payment at 150, which is right here. A lot of our bills come out this first week of the month, so we're gonna knock out most of them right away. Then we have my storage unit at 92.70. All right, so looks like the only bills that I have left for the month are my Michigan gas bill, which comes out in week two and my sleep number credit card, which comes out, I think in week three, but I could be wrong about that. Um, the rest of these categories here are variable things that I track week to week in these weekly sections and then fill in the actual amounts at the very end of the month. So um, I guess we are ready to get into the variable tracking for week one. Although if you are looking at my budget and you see something missing and you're wondering like, hey, where is this in her budget? Just know that there's some things that I don't include in my budget for privacy reasons. Doesn't mean I don't have them taken care of. I just keep them on my personal budget and don't share them with the internet. So if you're thinking I'm missing something from my budget, it's probably one of those categories I just choose to keep private. Can't show everything on the internet gotta have a little bit of privacy. All right, so let's go ahead and move into week one and start tracking these variable expenses. The variable categories that I track week to week are as follows. Auto pay, which is a bunch of little tiny bills that I lump into just one line item. Think things like streaming services, subscriptions, that sort of thing. They're all you know, $2 here, $26 there. If I individually listed them all in my monthly budget, it would take up all of these lines and it would just be a pain. So instead, I have just one line item here called auto pay that I budget a flat amount per month. And then each week I check in and figure out what I spent in that category, which I did in my expense tracking. Everything from that auto pay line item is in this light blue color, this like minty blue. So in addition to auto pay, we also track groceries week to week. I have my monthly budget that I set and then I grow, go grocery shopping every week. So each week I check in with our grocery budget, also our eating out budget, and our spending. Okay. So, I believe that is everything. You can, if you look here in my little categories here that I've separated out, I did bills here in the monthly section. The rest of these are variable, so they happen in the weekly section. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, that's why I call it a hybrid budget, because it's kind of a hybrid between monthly budgeting and weekly budgeting, or paycheck budgeting. Okay, 
For auto pay, it's really easy. I'm just gonna transfer these numbers here from one page to the other. I spent $70.78. For groceries, I spent $327.57. For eating out, I spent $86.64. And for spending, I spent $186.07. So that's everything I spent. Now let's see what's remaining in each category. I like to do this because it gives me an idea of what I can spend for the rest of the month. So for auto pay, for example, my monthly budget, as you can see here, is $300. So if I take that $300 and subtract what I already spent, which was 70, 78, that leaves me with $229 and 22 cents. And I'm actually just gonna take this hybrid budget worksheet right out. The great thing about this disc bound system is I can do that. And that way I'm not trying to write here up against these discs and have it be super uncomfortable. Now it's flat, there we go. Okay, for groceries, my monthly budget was $1,000. That's very low for us and it's definitely gonna be tough for us to meet that goal and not overspend in that category. Um, I said when I wrote my budget that that was about $250 a week in groceries and clearly I spent more than that in this first week. Um, so we'll have to see kind of what I can spend week to week moving forward to make up for that. So we spent $327.57 and that leaves us with $672.43. There are still three more weeks left in April. So if I divide that by three, I can see that that leaves me about $224 a week. Now that doesn't mean that I have to spend $224 each week. If I spend less than that, that gives me more to spend in subsequent weeks. If I spend more than that, it gives me a little bit less to spend in subsequent weeks. But I like to just kind of divide that by the remaining number of weeks just to give me an idea of what it would take for me to meet that budget and not overshoot it. All right, so now I know and I can use that information to help me throughout the next week. For eating out, my budget for the week, I'm sorry, my budget for the month is 300, which again is low for us. It's gonna be tough. It was a real big stretch goal to lower these amounts as much as I did. Um, Judging by how we did in the first week, it may be really, really hard for us to meet these goals, but it's best to aim for, I think it's best to lower your grocery budget, your eating out budget, and try really hard to meet that. Even if I go over budget a little bit, I do have a buffer in my account, but um, if I continue to give myself an exorbitant amount of money to spend in groceries, I'm going to spend it by giving myself a lower budget, I can really aim to spend less. So we'll see. So far, I've spent $86.64 in eating out, which leaves me a total of $213 with 36 cents. If I divide that by the three weeks left in the month, that's about $71.12 a week. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. And then lastly, we have my spending category here. Um, I started out with a budget of $600. We spent $186.07 in this first week. That leaves us with $413.93. Divided by three, about $137 each subsequent week. All right, let's get some totals here. First, what we spent in variable spending here. We spent 671.06 this week. And what do we have remaining for the rest of the month? One thousand 
$528.94. The reason I like to get a total is for my overall budget. If, for example, I go over budget in my grocery category, but I am under budget in my eating out category and they cancel each other out, I'm okay with it. So I have two twenty nine twenty two left in auto pay. I have six seventy two forty three in grocery and so on. But overall for variable categories, I have fifteen twenty eight ninety four, And as long as I don't spend more than that, no matter how I skew the numbers in these categories, um, I'm still okay with it. So I like to get a total too, just for that. I said I've got three weeks left. That means in variable spending, I can spend about $509 each week. And that just, again, is another um, data point to help me know what is to come in the next week to help me be prepared. I hope that makes sense. So that's it, you guys. This was pretty short and sweet. That's a look at everything for this week one check-in. I'm gonna go ahead and get this page put back into my planner. And we are all set up for another week of the budget. So I highly encourage you, if you are not checking in with your budget regularly throughout the month, to try it. Writing a budget at the beginning of the month and then not really looking at it again until the end of the month is a surefire way to overspend. I write out my budget at the beginning of the month. I check in at least once a week with it, sometimes more than that. Um, I'm constantly looking at how much I'm spending to see, you know, how things are going. It just helps me to stay informed and makes it easier to stick to the budget. So highly encourage you to do the same if you are not already doing so. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Check out those resources down below, my Etsy shop, my channel membership. There's some other links down there as well you might find useful. I'd appreciate it if you'd check that out, and I'll see you next time. Bye!